This is Galactic Mythology with Liz Grace, a podcast on astrology, mythology, and esoterica. Welcome, I'm your host Liz Grace, and before we dive in, I would like to say that I am not here to tell you how to live your life, and I am not here to hand out a cosmic cookbook. Therefore, the thoughts and opinions shared on this podcast belong to that of the host. I do encourage you to use your own discernment and to consult a licensed professional when necessary. With that being said, this is Galactic Mythology, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, lovely humans. I have a very special episode planned for you today. This is going to be an extensively deep dive on Vesta. I'll start us off by talking a bit about asteroid Vesta and where she is today in our astro skies. I'll speak very lightly about her current transits, mostly highlighting her relationship with the Sun and with Mercury. After that, we will explore the esoteric and not so well-known perspective of Vesta, one where the Vestal Virgins become Vestal Whores. I'm certain you'll gain something you didn't expect from this installment of galactic mythology as we explore the ancient and very misunderstood archetype of the goddess Vesta. Personally, within this year, I have felt a heightened sense of communion with this goddess. And beyond that, in my own natal chart, Vesta is conjunct my sun and my moon. She's actually sandwiched between the two of them. So Vesta has essentially been very close with me since my birth. Though lately, as already mentioned, my conscious attention has been acutely more interested in her than normal. I have been starting to see a pattern with natives who have strong Vesta influences in their charts and have found transiting Vesta to be a potential trigger of crisis moments, or rather, breakthrough moments. For these prominent Vesta natives, these moments involve life-altering events that typically have to do with their psyche, the higher realms, and issues of the spirit. I was recently in Berlin, Germany. That was throughout the later half of July this year and into the first week of August. I was out there studying abroad with a class from my local Portland Community College, when an overwhelming tug on the back of my brain encouraged me to be alone outside in writing. I walked to Lees Park, a park in the city that nearly feels like a forest, a forest with sculptural gravestones and gothic fonts scattered about. It's pretty common in Berlin for graveyards to also be beautiful public parks. This brain tug encouraged me to sit down and write straight from my stream of consciousness. And what spilled onto paper from the pen was a rant about Vesta. I found that I was connecting a lot of dots to my previous studies of the goddess Vesta with the, well, at the time of the mysterious brain tug, the up-and-coming sun-conjunct Vesta transit. The sun meets the asteroid goddess Vesta about once a year. Vesta's orbit takes roughly 3.6 years to complete, so the sun-Vesta conjunction can sometimes fall just outside that one-year marked window of time. At the time of the brain tug, I wasn't consciously aware of the upcoming conjunction. Looking back, it feels like Vesta was trying to pull my focus away from academics and back to the stars. It makes sense now that she was calling for my attention with a special day on the horizon, August 20th, 2024. That's when the sun paid its yearly visit to Vesta, my goddess, at the 27th degree and 50 minute mark of Leo. At the time of the brain tug, this date was about two weeks away, and I was not even aware of nor very prepared for the sun's visit. Vesta was doing her due diligence to get me filled in on what she was planning to share with the sun this year. Now, even though I was in Berlin, I based the event chart off of Portland, Oregon. So depending on where you are on the globe, this transit may have occurred on August 19th, 2024. And... To be clear before moving forward, this recent conjunction of the Sun and Vesta happened in the sign of Leo, but where Vesta is today, which is September 15th, the day of this recording, transiting Vesta is in the sign of Virgo, a very comfortable place for the asteroid goddess to be. There is a lot akin to the sacred virgin energy that is Virgo and the sacred flame that is Vesta. So, Now, with the goddess currently transiting Virgo, I have a message to the folks with a strong Vesta influence. 
you are in the process of gaining a strong sense of clarity. For a lot of things have been brought to the surface these past few months. I suggest that you reflect on your past season that is currently coming to a close. Please take some time to recognize all the things that you are leaving behind as you go into the end of the year. These things, people, objects, or situations are exiting your life largely because if you are doing the work and the self-care, they are no longer serving your highest path. And with that in mind, may you find forgiveness to those leaving your path. And may you find grace to yourself for following the signs to your highest timeline. Remember, the honorable keepers of the sacred flame will always have the ability to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I will say that asteroid goddess Vesta in the sign of Virgo along with the sun is supercharging the Earth's ethers with illuminating wisdom and bone-chilling discernment. Even for those of you who do not have a strong Vesta influence in your natal chart, you're likely witnessing things becoming more structured and well-defined. That is both personally and publicly. Vesta is a goddess that enjoys and honors boundaries along with routines. Themes that Virgo really enjoys as well. Oh, and we cannot forget Mercury, a planet that is also currently in and very cozy in the sign of Virgo. Mercury has been trailing behind the goddess Vesta for weeks now, and up until literally today, September 15th, when Mercury made its conjunction to and then passed to the asteroid goddess Vesta. This all happening within the 10th degree of Virgo on the zodiac wheel, also, Mercury just recently left its shadow zone from its last retrograde experience, a retrograde that occurred around August 5th and lasted through to August 28th. I suppose we can take the transit of Mercury and Virgo passing asteroid goddess Vesta to be a sign that we are out of the hole from whatever crisis that was stirred up spiritually during the last Mercury retrograde period, along with this year's Sun and Vesta conjunction. This is a good segue into my next bit, where I'm going to play a segment that I recorded on the day of the Vesta Sun conjunction at 28 degrees of Leo. I just rounded up that 27 degree 50 minutes of Leo, which is what we do for symbol systems, such as the Chandra or the Sabian symbols. I plan to pop back in at the end of my recording from August 20th to share the Chandra symbol for the 28th degree of Leo, and I'll do the same for the 11th degree of Virgo. And for your information, I am open to all symbol systems. I do choose to work with John Sandbox's symbols. However, I do hope to empower you to explore all the other various astrological symbol systems. Heck, you could even channel your own if you wanted to. Fun fact, that is how John Sandbach and the author for the Sabian symbols, Mark Edmund Jones, did it. Yes, that's right. They channeled their very own symbol system through their very own brains. Okay, enough with specifics on astrological symbol systems. Let's revisit August 20th, 2024, when I recorded a segment on Vesta conjunct the sun. And one more thing before I play the August 20th segment, this audio was featured on the Fun Astrology podcast back on August 25th of this year. Now, I was hoping to get this content created and posted to my own galactic mythology channel way sooner than now, but as it turned out, with the amount of time I had allotted between being back home from Germany and being back on the road, long story short, all that I had hoped for in podcast land was definitely not feasible. However, I was fortunate enough to record my Vesta piece on the actual date of the sun and Vesta conjunction. And... I did manage to send the audio once it was done over to my friend and mentor Thomas Miller, the host of the Fun Astrology podcast, for him to review. And to my surprise, Thomas felt that the Vesta piece, which I have been calling throughout this, the August 20th segment, was deserving of its own Sunday special. And so it aired while I was on Playa for Burning Man on August 25th, 2024. If you are unfamiliar with Thomas Miller's work in the Fun Astrology podcast, I suggest checking his work out. I'll link his website in the show notes. Alrighty, let's dive into the August 20th segment on Vesta. On August 20th, 2024, an important celestial event unfolded. 
the sun in Leo made an exact conjunction to asteroid goddess Vesta at 27 degrees 50 minutes. This aspect is more than just an astrological occurrence. It symbolizes a powerful infusion of the sun's energy into the eternal flame that Vesta represents. Mercury retrograde is close behind in this exact conjunction between the sun and Vesta, which only heightens the already potent Leo energy in the air. Traditionally, Mercury retrograde is a time for rest and introspection, yet the season has defined expectations. Instead of slowing down, we have found ourselves immersed in social interactions, technology, and logistics. For a time reference, this latest installment of Mercury retrograde started back on August 5th, and it will end on August 28th. I'm recording this on the day of the Vesta Sun conjunction, August 20th, 2024. This movement in the stars has invited us to step into the spotlight, particularly in the area of our charts where Vesta is currently transiting, which is in the sign of Leo. So for instance, Leo falls on the cusp of my fourth house, which is connected to the home family, and intuition, I've noticed a significant increase in activity and energy in those areas of my life. You might discover similar patterns if you explore where Leo falls in your own chart. Leo, the lion, is a sign that embodies power, confidence, and loyalty. Those born under Leo are naturally inclined to express themselves creatively. It's their evolutionary birthright to do so. The convergence of the Sun, Vesta, and Mercury retrograde in Leo has made this retrograde season particularly vibrant and communicative. Additionally, Mars and Jupiter in the sign of Gemini has pushed us out of our comfort zones making this a time of tumultuous yet regenerative change. We are all undergoing personal revolutions, transformative moments that allow us to reshape our realities. Now let's turn our focus back to Vesta, a figure often misunderstood in both mythology and astrology. Historically, Vesta transitioned from the role of a sacred whore in matriarchal societies to that of a sacred virgin in patriarchal Rome and Greece. This shift coincided with the growing awareness among men of the role of sperm in reproduction, which led to the patriarchal claim over women's bodies and reproductive rights. Before this understanding, Childbirth was considered pure magic, a divine mystery of the feminine. The Vestal Virgins were originally sex priestesses in pre-Dorian indigenous Mediterranean cultures. These beings were the sacred keepers of the flame. Whether labeled as virgins or whores, these priestesses shared the profound responsibility of tending to the divine spark, the source of all creation. Leo, a sign intimately connected with creation, children, and the heart, resonates strongly with Vesta's energy. In ancient times, Vesta's temples were sacred spaces for spiritual recalibration, where individuals sought visions from the divine. The act of creation, whether through artistic expression or the miracle of childbirth, serves as a testament to the sacred energy that Vesta embodies. It's essential to understand that exploring Vesta's history it's not about diminishing the masculine or about placing the ancient matriarchal societies on a pedestal. Rather, it's an invitation to grasp the full story of the goddess Vesta, 
a tale of transformation from whore to virgin, from a symbol of the sacred flame to a representation of the evolving understanding of creation and power. This knowledge empowers you to appreciate the depth and complexity of Vesta, recognizing both sides of her story. There's a reason why sex feels so deeply fulfilling. It's because on some level, it connects us to the divine with creation energy itself. The priestesses who served in Vesta's temples were wholly devoted to this source energy, whether they were known as whores or as virgins. In the matriarchal era, the term virgin birth held a different meaning. It referred to a child born from a sacred sexual act, often occurring in a dark cave or temple space with multiple male partners. The progeny of such unions were considered children of the divine, representatives of higher forces, and were cared for by the community. With this historical context in mind, Vesta emerges as a goddess linked to the creative spark, a visionary, a powerful psychic, and a deity that bridges dimensions. Vesta is not just a symbol, but she is a portal into the divine. For those born with strong Vesta influences, such as conjunctions or hard aspects to the sun, moon, or personal planets, her energy will be omnipotent. These individuals often find themselves at the heart of important social circles, families, or communities. There's a unique part of their soul that serves as a beacon, a connection to the spark of life, acting almost like a direct line to the divine. These Vesta influence individuals are frequently gifted, whether as writers, speakers, or artists, finding that creativity flows naturally through them. Their presence is often felt the moment that they enter a room, a somewhat ironic occurrence for the native since their primary focus is on tending that eternal flame, channeling their energy away from personal recognition and toward the act of creation itself. These beings vibrate at a frequency of source, making them natural conduits to higher realms and acute detectors of truth. Moreover, Vesta natives carry with them a unique form of protection in this lifetime. The eternal flame they tend must be safeguarded, and so they are surrounded by unseen forces, ensuring the longevity of their sacred mission. But, of course, this divine protection isn't without its conditions. Vesta natives must be willing to do the work to maintain this connection to the eternal flame. It's likely that if you have Vesta strongly influencing your chart, especially in aspect to the sun, the moon, the lunar nodes, or Pluto, you've been devoted to this work in past lives. However, this doesn't exempt you from the need to continue nurturing that flame in your current incarnation. If you are someone with a strong Vesta presence in your natal chart, Paying attention to transiting Vesta is crucial. When she makes aspects to your natal personal planets, especially the sun, expect significant breakthroughs, paradigm-shifting changes that can alter the course of your life. These aren't always easy transitions. Long-standing friendships might end, deep emotional traumas could surface, and even panic attacks might occur. Vesta, as an ancient goddess of sacred sex, creation, and life, challenges us to engage with the purest forms of these energies. How can we experience the highest expressions of creation without first achieving true consent, both with ourselves and with others? 
Transiting Vesta's role is to purify us, to make us confront our shadows directly so that we don't pollute our channel to the divine. Light creates contrast with darkness. They are inseparable, just as the archetypes of the whore and the virgin. They coexist within the same spectrum. Vesta teaches us that one cannot exist without the other. And yet, it is through this duality that we find our truest connection to the source. Looking back on 2024 and the recent conjunction of Vesta with the sun, I truly believe that we're all being given a chance to glimpse a little slice of heaven. This conjunction isn't just about the personal transformations. It's also making a trine aspect to the galactic center in Sagittarius at 27 degrees. This alignment amplifies the potential for interdimensional contact, offering us a deeper connection to the cosmos. To give you some perspective, the galactic center is a powerful point in our Milky Way galaxy, and from our vantage point on Earth, it appears in the constellation Sagittarius. This celestial alignment touches on themes of belief and morality, and it might even leave us feeling a bit dreamy or as if our heads are in the clouds during these last days of August. Earlier, I mentioned that we all are experiencing personal revolutions, and I want to emphasize how fitting that word is, the word revolution, for this time. As I speak and record this, Saturn, Chiron, Neptune, Mercury, and Pluto are all retrograde. The sun's recent passage by Vesta is sending waves of fresh inspiration through us as a collective. From the 20th onward, today, as I record, it's as though the universe is urging us to embrace playfulness, to become inspired, and tap into our own creative potential. As I conclude this exploration of Vesta's recent conjunction with the sun, we are reminded that this event is more than just a celestial alignment. It represents a profound opportunity for personal and collective transformation. The trine aspect to the galactic center in Sagittarius amplifies our connection to the cosmos, inviting us to explore deeper dimensions of belief and morality. As we navigate these final days of August, we may find ourselves dreaming more, contemplating the bigger picture, and feeling the pull of something greater. This retrograde season with Saturn, Chiron, Neptune, Mercury, and Pluto all in retrograde is a time of personal revolution, a time to reflect, renew, reshape, and to reinvent our realities. So let your heart be the guide as you dive deep into your connection with the divine. Whether you see it as Kundalini, the cosmos, or God, this is your moment of renewal. This is your chance to reconnect with the sacred flame from within. Allow that light to shine brightly in every aspect of your life and allow it to illuminate the path ahead. This is Liz Grace. I thank you for your time. Hello, I am back, and we are not done yet. Remember those astrological symbol systems. I'm here to read to you the two channel symbols that I promised. First for the 28th degree of Leo, and then I will read for the 11th degree of Virgo. The 28th degree is where the sun came to conjunct Vesta this year of 2024. So what does John Sandbach's Omega symbol have to say for the 28th degree of Leo? A diamond thought to be fake turns out to be real. Life is deeply affected by how we look at it. You have the ability to approach existence in a way that makes everything more vivid and alive, both for yourself and others. You have a power to wake others up to what truly is on a spiritual level and to be a light of hope to them through the intensity of your sincerity. Everywhere you're always finding real truths that might seem like throwaway items at first. So much of the treasure of life is right out there in plain sight. We've just not recognized it yet. 
you can help other people to do so. I'm reading that for the first time today, and wow, that is spot on to the energy I was attempting to conjure while discussing the recent Sun and Vesta conjunction. Let's explore the Omega symbol for the 11th degree of Virgo. This is where Mercury came to conjunct Vesta. The smell of ancient perfume as an Egyptian tomb is opened. You have the power to tap into energies in a direct way and to grasp situations immediately. You deeply feel what is going on around you and know that most of it has to do with ties to the past that have created chronic stuck places. At your best, you are able to help others to release these energy knots so that they may move on. Astrology, mythology, and esoterica, they are certainly no joke. And I promise I didn't peek at those omega symbols before everything we've discussed in this episode. I feel that this was the first time I opened the book to seek out those specific degrees. And wow, they lit a fire within me. Reading those symbols just now and letting their message sink in, I see them as a clear signpost reminding me that I am on the right path. So if you've been waiting for a sign, this is it. And yes, there truly has been a light in the tunnel all along. If this podcast gave you something new to chew on or possibly shifted your perspective on the role of the whore in society, please leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, or become a subscriber. I currently create all of this by myself, and I do so from the passion of my heart. I feel compelled to share my thoughts to the world, and it appears that you are crazy enough to listen all the way to the end. This is Galactic Mythology with Liz Grace. Have a blessed day, evening or night, all the love and all the wonder. Bye-bye.